Hello everybody, this is Jason from Complus 3 and I am here today with Rodney from Rising Phoenix Games. How are you doing today, Rodney? Good, thank you very much. And yourself? Yeah, I'm doing pretty well, thanks. Very good. Um, so, um, Rising Phoenix Games, you've been around for a while, nearly 10 years now, and I noticed, interestingly, that it was founded supposedly on New Year's Eve. So, <laughs> can, you, can you tell us a bit about what happened with that and how it unfolded into Rising Phoenix Games? Yeah, so um, I was working as a web app developer um, and I'm not really that happy in the job and I wanted to so I wanted to follow my my passion um, and get more into writing and role playing games. So I decided, you know, you only get one shot at life. So let me do that. Um, <laughs> and then we went to Japan for five years. So we are 10 years old, but we've only really been going for five years, <laughs> which is, um, but yeah, it's, it was, it's been a good journey and I've learned a lot. Um, and I'm very happy to be able to, to do this. Um, I'm not full time really like I spend a lot of time doing editing and freelance work as well as rising Phoenix stuff, but yeah, yeah it's, it's a good place to be. Awesome. Cool. And, um, when you when you sort of got going with your company, you started off producing solo RPGs, and and also they yep. can be played one on one with with another player. Um, they've yeah. evolved into you've got like a choose your destiny series as well, which is designed for fifth edition. Um, why did you go down this route as opposed to a lot of other companies doing adventures for say four players or sort of a group effort? Hmm. I think there's a lot of um, room in the market for solo RPGs. Um, also, you know, um, when I was a kid, I, I used to play that, uh, read those fighting fantasy books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was something about that that I really loved, you know. Um, and I think, you know, now we're in a time when a lot of, when this is for a lot of people, the only way they can play, you know, uh, to open up a book, play by themselves. Um, so, yeah, it was, it's been a good a good little route to explore mm. yeah definitely and yeah like, like you said you've got like fighting fantasy and choose your own adventure books and novels but not really much of more going into the role-playing part so yeah that's a nice little niche that you've carved out there um, and i believe D, &D is also the, um, i'm not sure what the line is called but i think they've also got a bunch of adventure books now where you can be i think it's called like you are the fighter you are the cleric or something oh, like right, that okay um yeah, so there's definitely space for it. Um, and I think uh, what's nice when you're the writer of those books is that in more of a sense, you are also the GM because yeah. there's no one else necessarily to to run the game. We do write our books so that if someone wanted to run that as a game, they could. Um, but still, you as the, the writer, it's a different challenge. You know, mm. if, you, if you're providing all the information for the GM, the GM can can take that and they can run with it and they can make up for a lot of your faults in a way as the writer. But when you're doing it for one right for one player, you have to make sure that your your balance is right and your descriptions are right and, and also that it's entertaining. Um, you can't rely on someone else's descriptions to to carry the adventure. So mm, absolutely yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is it is quite different. Um, also, a lot, a lot of your books, of this sort of variety, they, they take place in in Scarthy, um, which looks like quite a, a, a rich, developed world. So, um, also, I noticed it, it seems like you can kind of unlock uh, more parts of of Scarthy, and it kind of implies almost that they're linked together. So, can you tell yeah. us a bit about that? So they they do sort of follow on, or they they do follow on. Um, but it's not required that you read book one, book two, book three in order. Um, we, we've basically done the first book, um, Death Queen and the Lifestone, mm -hmm. is the first adventure. And then there are three adventures that follow that. So you can go into those, um, excuse me, any way that you want. Um, and the third one of those books we we have is um, been sitting in editing for a while. Um, we've sort of we have a Patreon um, that we've been running for the Choose Your Destiny Adventures, but 
we sort of um, have to want us to take a step back and just re-examine things. Um, I think we've still, as a relatively new company, we've tried many different things. Some some things have worked well. Uh, I think the Choose Your Destiny adventures have worked well, mm. but you know we have to think quite uh, carefully about our next step step forward. Um, so we've basically put them on hold for the moment. But um, yeah, our intention is to to just to relook at that and then come back to it again. But um, yeah, it's it's definitely something I'm excited about and I don't want to drop. Um, though at the same time we we're seriously considering looking at uh, Pathfinder Second Edition. Okay. Um, I think the D and D market is a strong one, uh, but I think the the Pathfinder Two. There's a lot of um, for one, the community is a really nice community, and I think as it's a relatively new game, I think there's a lot of place to grow into it. Mm. Um, so yeah, we actually released a book a little while ago, um, Heaven and Hell. Oh yeah. Okay. For Pathfinder Two, um, which has been one of our top selling products at the moment, nice. uh, and we'd like to keep supporting the game. Um, so we've we've sort of had to say, okay, well, we can't do everything at the same time. We have to focus on one thing. So now it's Pathfinder Two for a little bit, sure. and then we'll get back to the adventures. <laughs> mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then another another product in your in your arsenal, which you're also giving away. A compass three um claustrophobia which i i yeah. never thought after, out of all the kind of indie rpgs out there i never thought i'd see an rpg based around playing a garden gnome <laughs> how, how how on earth did you come up with that what was the inspiration behind it so um there's a site online uh, called 1000 monkeys 1000 typewriters and they have this contest the 24-hour rpg contest so i entered that and wrote the first, the initial draft, basically, of claustrophobia okay. was for that contest. And then I was like, well, you know, I could take this a bit further and I could make it into, you know, a pretty book with pictures and everything. So my brother did all the art, the illustration for it. And then we basically developed it, um, smooth, smooths off a lot of the edges that you get from making something in 24 hours mm. and um, play tested it. And then, yeah, and then we published it. Um, and now we're looking at, or we've started work on, so, so claustrophobia is now four years old this month. So we are busy working on claustrophobia extended, which will be the, the next or second edition of the game. So, um, I think we've, I've learned so much in these past few years, um, just as from, in terms of game design, writing and uh i think there were mechanics in the game that worked well but could work better mm. and we also want to extend the game a bit i think it was very much a beer and pretzels game very light yeah um and we want to take it to the next step maybe um give you a lot more options not too many options but you know allow you to tell the story that you want to tell so yeah. this is a good opportunity for us to go back and and rework things and hopefully make a a book that more people will um or a lot of people will enjoy a game people will enjoy sure yeah um having said that obviously yeah i, I did assume you were going to do some tweaks at least to your new edition but can you give us a little yeah. run through about the current d6 system and how that works so uh, one of the the main sort of features was the health system was d6s so you had a number of d6s say i think it was eight D6s. It's been a while since I played, but um, you you could then roll them, and then you would lose them through through injury and um, through going mad, through basically what we call claustrophobia. So you're down in the depths of the earth. Um, you you know fear and terror take uh, take take over, and then you start losing dice, and your dice pool gets smaller. But then you can also share your dice pool in certain ways with other characters oh, so okay so that was kind of a neat mechanic but at the end of the day when you each player needs a, a huge pool of dice it starts to get a little bit unwieldy um so that's one of the things we're, we're looking at changing up but i think it will i think it will be an interesting uh, uh re re-envisioning of the game 
Mm. So I'm very excited. Yeah, definitely. So um, you've kind of answered my final question a little bit, unless there's anything else you want to add. But as you said, you're, you're going to be working on your new claustrophobia edition. You want to mm. kind of go back into Scarfy and, and relook at that at some point. Um, yeah. But, you know, you know, you're obviously an established company. You've won a lot of drive through awards and things and you've really grown. Um, is there anything else that you have planned or upcoming in the near future? Yeah. So um, our main thing now is that we're busy working on uh, a new setting, uh, Valkyrie Ragnarok and Valkyrie Saga. Okay. And we are releasing fiction for those two um, on our website and through our newsletter at the end of every month. Um, so now we're just doing the sort of uh, the taste tester, if you want, and uh, eventually we'll start releasing books for that. We've, we're, we're working on a few systems for that. Um, uh, and that will then be Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Okay. And then, um, so I don't really, ha I can't really say when the first books will come out, but that's that's one of the things that we're working on. We're also working on a, a series of books for the Dungeon Masters Guild called the Undersea Source Books. And that will be um, seven books uh, broken up into six first, six initials, basically, books of the first one is Races and Classes, which is out already. The next one, which should be out in two or so weeks, is Feats and Equipment. And then we'll have a magic one, Monsters. Um, so all of it is covering. Undersea adventures, pirates, uh, mermaids, all that that sort of thing. Awesome, and I'm assuming yeah. those will be available on your website and on Drive Through. Yeah, so it's only available on the DMs Guild, but oh, we right. have links on our website to that. Sure. Um, and then another thing we were very excited about. Yeah, we've got a lot of <laughs> things on the go, but um, is the um, we've recently partnered with. Um, Imperial Publishing. Um, they do the Nightscape series. Um, which is a series of novellas, novels, comics. And there's also a movie, which I believe was 2012, that came out, uh, called Nightscape. And so we are, we should be releasing sometime this year the RPG for that called Nightscape Red Terrors. So um, very excited about that uh, and getting to play in someone else's world for a bit. So uh, look out for that one. Cool. So lots of stuff coming up on the horizon. Fantastic. Yeah. And that's a sort of Lovecraftian, um, what's, it's set just after the the fall of the Berlin Wall in Russia. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so you've got uh, entities from uh, deepest, darkest space and uh, ancient relics and yeah, it'll be fun. Mm. I think it's definitely one to look out for. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks very much, Rodney, for taking the time to talk to me today. And thanks as well for no, coming on board this year for Complus 3. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. I had a reason to wear a suit for, for a change. <laughs> I put on pants today. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Rodney Sloan of Rising Phoenix Games, and I want to encourage you to support the Butterfly Project. Thank you very much.